Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, I bless your name. I appreciate you. Give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. Who is like unto you? There is not like you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. I worship you, Lord. I honor you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I worship you. I magnify your name. Worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let the name of the Lord 
the joy of the Lord will never cease in our lives. Bible says, Let everything that has breath breathe. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Because the Lord has given us breath, we have every reason to glorify Him. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. We give him all the glory. We give him all the honor. Brother, I welcome you all to this our discussion. That repents. Repent. For the day of the Lord is near. It's not the time to play careless. We may be living in this world, but we are not of this world. We all have expiring dates. We are like products that is sold in the market. We are in the marketplace. We are in the marketplace. We are not here. We are like pilgrims. We are not here to live our life forever on this earth. Our life is temporary here. There is eternal place that awaits every one of us. But there are two sides to eternity. It depends on which one you decide. How do you decide it? We decide it here now that you are alive, not after death. It's appointed for men to die once after death is judgment. It's not after that. There is no mercy after death. There is no repentance in the grave. That is why it baffles me at times when you see people in the when they are going for procession, they all they are going for they are going to for burial ceremony or they are you see the, the, the priest begin to pray. That is a misfire prayer as far as I'm concerned. I don't know what they expect that prayer to do, either to save the soul of the dead or to do what? No, this is the time we need to repent now, not after death. That is like prescription after death, which we all know is ever too late. So we are here to bring good news to every one of us. And what is the good news? That is Jesus Christ. He is the reason why we are living. He is the reason why we are living. We are here to tell you the love of Jesus. Because all of us, we must give account to our Savior one day. All of us, we must give account to our Savior one day. Every one of us, definitely we aspire on this earth. The question is, how do you live your life? How do I live? Um, um, how do I live my life? We have who we are going to give our account to on that day. That is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior, the one who has final say over our soul. So, how are you living your life? How am I living my life? This is a question we need to ask every one of us today. That is why we are here to bring good news, a word of repentance that can that is able to save your soul. That is why we are here today to tell you to repent because the day of the Lord is near. The day of the Lord is near. We are living in the last days. It's not the time to live carelessly, to live a carefree life. No. We must know our stand in Christ Jesus. Eternity. It's so near. You might say, oh, we are hearing this. Yes, perhaps. What if? The judgment does not come soon, but one will definitely die. Where will your soul go after that? If this, if the rich man knew this, he would have perhaps if the if the rich man knew this, perhaps he would have taken a right step. That is why we are here today to tell you about the love of Christ. Let every one of us first repent, for the day of the Lord is near. Let us examine ourselves. Paul said we should examine ourselves if we are in Christ or not, because you cannot deceive yourself. You can deceive men. You can deceive the world. You can deceive your spouse. You can deceive your friends, but you cannot deceive yourself. You know yourself better than any other person. So you know when you are doing the right thing, you know when you are doing the wrong thing, you know when you are yielding yourself to the enemy, you know when you are yielding yourself, when you are doing, when you are on the right path, because the way there are two voices that speak to man, inside man, the voice of the Lord, 
and the voice of the enemy. It depends on which one you choose to listen to, which you choose to obey. So you have the willpower. You have the willpower to control your emotions. You have the willpower to control how to control yourself, to know the path, to, to monitor your activities on the earth. The Lord has long given man the choice. He said, whatever you are looking for, it is not in heaven that you are looking for who to go for you. Neither is it under the sea that you are looking for who to help you out. He said, the, that that you are searching for is in thy mouth. Is in You are in charge. You are in charge. So you have the willpower, you have the authority to control yourself. It is not left for you. No, that is why Paul said, I bring my body under subjection. I bring my body, I discipline my body. Lest after preaching to others, he himself will be a castaway. Paul knew this. He knows, he knew that God is no respecter of man. He doesn't, he doesn't, it doesn't matter how many people you are able to win to God, to Christ. It doesn't matter how you have healed the sick. It doesn't matter how you have raised the dead. It doesn't matter how you have given to the orphans, to the, how you have given to the work of charity. We will go there, First Corinthians chapter 13. What matters, it is how you live your life to please God. The key word there is holiness. It's holiness. Holiness without which no man can see God. Holiness without which no man can see God. It is not about your beauty. It is not about your status. It is not about your riches. It is not about your connection. Holiness without which no man can see the face of God Almighty. Holiness. That is why when Nicodemus came to meet the Lord at the hour of the night, perhaps to see cancer or how he would go about his ministry, or I don't know. He had this reason why he came. And the Lord began to tell him about the salvation of his soul, telling him to save himself first. Nicodemus, you may be a teacher in Israel, master of the law. You have gone to all, every kind of, you have gone to all the theology, all the theological schools. You have gone, you have acquired all the certificates concerning the ministry. It does in any way can't. What are Nicodemus? Save yourself. You need to save yourself first before you save others. That is how it is today. It doesn't matter what you have given to the poor. You have given. Paul said, "Give your if if you like, give yourself to be burnt. Without you pleasing the Lord, you will not see the face of God." We all go to the market to buy things to shop. You take a product, the first thing you look, you want to look the expiring date. How soon this product will wear out? If it's good enough for you to buy, when you see that the expiring date is closed or it is expired, you cannot open your eyes and buy expired products because you believe it function, it's 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 non effective anymore. You cannot you cannot serve that purpose on which you are buying that product. That is how our life is. We are like a product in the marketplace. Our manufacturer is God Almighty. So we are displayed. We are a product that is displayed, that we attract, that we attract people, that we attract buyers, that we attract souls. It is how you attract people that will determine how you win souls to God Almighty. If you are a wasted product, your own is to drive people from the presence of God Almighty. Punishment awaits you. If you are a product that attracts, that brings customers to the manufacturer, that to God Almighty, your reward awaits you. All I want to every one of us to know today, know this today, that we have expiring debts. You and I, we have expiring debts. Our time, we have no man can live forever. No man can live forever. That is why I, I put a, a, a right of that day, turn by turn, 
in our quiet time with the Holy Spirit. Oh, you have been attending other people's funeral. One day somebody will attend yours. That is turn by turn. It is their turn right now. One day it will become your turn. It is not a curse. It is something that must. It is something that must surely happen. That is in an inevitable. But my own is I cannot declare with my mother my life is short. My life is not too short. I have a long time to do that which the Lord has sent me to do. That is what you should you should be professing in your mother. God should give you the grace to accomplish his his purpose, his plan and purpose over your life on this earth. You must be able to affect others. You must be able to please the master that sent you, that created you. It must be him first before every other thing. It must be God first in every in everything you do, whatsoever step you are taking. Ask yourself, will my master be pleased with this? Will my master be pleased with this? Am I doing this to please my carnal, my, my flesh? Or I am taking this step to please God Almighty. That should be the first thing that comes to your mind. Prioritize your, your activities on the earth. Let it be God first in all that you do. Both in the both in hidden in the secret or in the open, both at work in your home. Let Christ be what every man is reading in your life. Identity. We will aspire one day. A product. How well are you reaching out to others? How well are you utilizing your gift? Every man is given a gift. No man is no Christian. Okay, let me put it this way. No Christian or no man is empty on this earth. You have a gift the Lord is expecting you to utilize. So it depends on how you're able to use that gift. It depends on how you're able to use that gift. If you use it widely, wisely, the reports await you. Unfortunately, what do we have today? The word of God has been much chanted. It is now monetized. Unsaid. Are you part of those that are planning to begin to sell the word of God? Think twice, because you you are going to be account. You are going to give account. You will be accountable for all the steps that you take. Why on earth? That is why we are sending this warning to you. That repent for the day of the Lord is near. Repent for the day of the Lord is near. Repent for the day of the Lord is near. Put your master first. Let it be Christ first. It doesn't matter the city. It doesn't matter the state it doesn't matter the country that you are we do not have different god that 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 different countries have we have one god we have one god be in africa in america in europe we have one god and we are to serve him in spirit and in truth irrespective of your gender irrespective of your color irrespective of your race irrespective of your status we are to serve him in holiness and righteousness. He said, God is a spirit. They that serve him, they that worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. Unfortunately, how many of us know this today? What do we have today? Your purpose of serving God, majority, your purpose of serving God is going there to ask, Lord, hear me. Lord, give me a child. That is when you remember that you have a father in heaven. Lord, give me, make me rich. Lord, give me a job. Lord, give me a husband. Lord, give me a wife. Is that the purpose of your salvation? Must you attach a need to your work with God? Where is the love of God in our hearts? That is the question today. We are living in the last days. If you do not know your identity right now, or you do not know your path right now, you do not have a path in Christ Jesus, you have to go back to your first love. Go back to your drawing board and begin to examine yourself. Stop murmuring. Stop murmuring. Begin. Don't, don't stop complaining. Why am I in this situation? Why, why is my life like this? There is no second you on this earth. 
and there is a reason God created you, and there is a reason why you are in that home. There is a reason why you are where you are today. You are the one that is ignorant of it. Your eyes need to be open. You must first and foremost make the Lord and Savior establish a personal relationship with Christ. You must establish a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Matthew 7. Not many that call, no, no, no many that say to me, Lord, Lord. Have you ever come, come across that verse? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Matthew 7, verse 21. The demons proclaim, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, who are you? Matthew 7, Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. He that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. What is the will of his Father? Not everyone. So not everyone that says, I am a Christian that is qualified to enter the kingdom of God. That is not my word. I've just read it down to you. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, he said, not everyone, not everyone, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, not everyone that cry unto me, Lord, Lord, not everyone that call his name, that shall, that we, that shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. What is the will of Jesus' Father? What is the will of the Father? He said, if you love me, obey my commandment. Father God said, be ye holy, for I, the Lord, is holy. That's his will. He said, run from the sin of fornication, adultery, lying, prostitution, anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, malice, pride, ego. You must do the, you must know the way, what is the mind of the father concerning you? He said, not everyone that said unto me. So if you must please the father, you must first and foremost search his heart. What is the will? What is his will concerning you, concerning me? Verse 22. Many we say unto, and many we say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Prophecy alone does not qualify you. That's what the Lord is saying here. If you like, prophesy. Keep, prof keep prophesying. You can prophesy. Let it prophesy from January to December. And let everything begin to come to pass. It says, many will say unto him that the Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Listen. Have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name, have we... <laughs> In thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works, work of the flesh, miracles. They are talking about prophecy. He's talking about how he has cast out, how he has healed the sick, how he has raised the dead. Look at what the Lord said in verse 24. Verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. Ye workers of iniquity. So it's not about prophecy. It's not about casting out demons. It's not about healing the sick. It's not about raising the dead. It's not about seeing visions. The Lord said he's going to deny them. I don't know you. Of course, you use the name of Jesus Christ. But does he really know you? That's what we are saying today. Verse 25. Or verse 24. Therefore, whosoever, whosoever heareth, these sayings of mine, and do it them, I will liken not to him. A wise man will build his house upon a rock. That is the will of the Father. Hearing this word, acknowledging and believing the word, and doing it, that is the will of the Father. Many will say unto me, Lord, on that day, I profess in thy name, he said, I will say unto them, I know you not. Whosoever that does the will of the Father, that's the one that will enter the kingdom of God. And he said, whoever heareth this word of mine and put it into practice, 
We are hearers. We have a lot of hearers today, but how many are put into practice? We hear. Uh, we immediately go away. And that wicked one, thief, comes and steals that from your heart, which you have heard, because it has no base, it has no roots. Because you hear it, but you never study the word. Is wanting to hear another thing to study the word of God so that it begin to reflect in your life, you begin to put it to practice. Say, so whoever hear these things of mine, and do it then. I would like not to, I would like him also. I would see him as a wise man, a wise man that is willing, that is anxious to please the one that created him. It's a warning for every one of us today. Repent. There has never been a time of wickedness like the time that we are in right now. Evil all over. Wickedness. Wickedness, both in churches, everywhere. Hardly do you hear the word of repentance in the church. It is seldom preached. Hardly do you hear the word of repentance in the pulpit today. Why? Because the word of God has been machanted. It is not tagged. It is not with money it is not on the word of god is not placed on sale the higher it is the highest bid that takes the highest blessings the higher you bid because your money is there your money speaks for you right now so they sell it let everybody take heed because in the last day the bible already warned us many we fall away there shall be a falling away in the last days the love of money the love of money is taking its roots in the body of Jesus Christ. Thereby, many will fail, many will fall away because the love of many we was cold. The desire, the anxiety, the desire will go down. The willingness will go down. Why? Because the church is cold. Why? Because there is strange fire in the pulpits. The church is cold. The church is cold. The church is cold. Let everyone hear this word of God today. You don't have any excuse. The Lord, the Bible tells us that the old word, the Lord used the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah as an example for us, this present generation, to know, to know what is ahead because he does, he has never, and he will not change for man. Your, your money cannot change God. Your charity work cannot change God. Your speaking in tongues cannot change God. Your healing the people cannot change God. It remains the same. It doesn't matter how they have twisted this word of God today in the church. How they have turned every verse in the church. How every man has introduced his adultery to explain the Bible. It doesn't matter. He remains the same. And when you aspire today, you are still going to stand with the Creator. The Word of God tells us, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. He said, because you have rejected His Word, the Lord is going to reject us on that day. So get to know Christ through His Word, not by man. Because a lot of men have favored. A lot of men church is right now is now married to the world until there is an immediate divorce between church and the world the members will suffer the members will suffer because they are like blind sheep following blind shepherd and the bible says if the blind lead the blind where would, where would they they will end up in the ditch let us know who we our path today Ask the Lord to open your spiritual eye that you can see clearly. Ask the Lord to open your spiritual eye that you can see clearly. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. That young man, when he approached the Lord in Mark chapter 10, verse 17, he said, Master, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? What must I, I'm talking, I that is talking right now, what must I do, do to please the master? What must you do to please, to please the master? Let me tell you. 
this our race has nothing to do with you be stagnant our spiritual race is a daily walk you must not take the step of yesterday to live your today there must be a fresh step that you are taking today because it is a walk it is a walk you don't stay in one place for long neither do you stay in one place and begin to look back to check where you are coming from because you will miss your part it is a spiritual work that the Bible tells us in the same Matthew chapter 7 verse 14 Matthew chapter 7 verse 14 let us examine ourselves today the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 and 14 verse 13 enter ye at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in their right wide is the gate and broad is the way that lead to destruction there are multitude two penny there verse 14 matthew 7 verse 14 because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life a few there be that find it straight is the gate and narrow is the way that lead to life only few only few are able to find it strive to be among the few luke chapter 13 says so from verse 24 strive to be among the few i repeat again there is no stagnancy in this on this narrow path you don't move and stand in one place when you stand in one place is it that you are rooted out of the way or you make way for those that are passing to pass you grow every day that's why paul said you can't continue to drink milk when you are supposed to be an adult taking adult food it is a race where we focus where you must focus on christ hebrews chapter 5 starting from verse 11 of whom we have many things to say and had to be uttered saying ye are of dull hearing god said was talking what that Paul or the writer of Hebrews was saying, they had they have so many things to teach the people, but they are of dull hearing because they are not improving themselves, they are not sharpening their spiritual mind. They need to find their spirit, their spiritual work with prayer and with the word of God. Look at verse 12. He said, For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principle of the oracles of god and have become such as have need of me and not of strong meat say when you're supposed to be teachers error that is why when i started i said every one of us we have gifts your gift may be to to be interceding for people in prayer and you do it do it do it with all diligence do it because you are doing it to please the master, not man. The Lord can give you the gift of intercession. You are interceding for the churches. You are interceding for the pastors. You are interceding for lost souls. You are interceding for those that are on the street evangelizing. You are interceding for those on the mission field. That could be your gift. And you do it wisely separate set a time for that it could be two two or three three days you must have a particular time because when you are doing it angels we we will be there it could be that is your gift another it could be the gift of supporting the ministry of jesus christ you can have the gift giving is a gift because not everyone can release 
you can have the gift of supporting the ministry, the crusade, evangelism, those that are doing prison evangelism, hospital evangelism. The Lord can give you the gift to support, even if you can't be part of them, to support, to buy Bibles and maybe supply them clothes for them to take there. That is a gift on its own. You can have gift of teaching the children. You can have the gift of being an usher in the church, the gift of singing, the gift of just cleaning the church. We have different gifts and you have to use it. Not after that, you begin to ask for mercy. That is what we are saying. Just like what I said initially, you are a product in the marketplace. How you utilize that gift will determine what kind of product you are. Are you just lying there? You are a dormant? You are dormant? No. I stand, stand up and use your gift wisely. Be that product that attracts people with the gift the Lord has given you. Because on that day you are going to give account. Say not many that say to me, Lord, Lord. So many people have gifts, but they misuse it. Misplacements of priority. They misuse it. And the Lord said he is going to profess to them. I know you know, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Meaning the gift that the Lord gave them, they never use it for his glory. Perhaps they use it for their own selfish purpose. They use it for their own selfish purpose. That's why we're telling every one of you today, know your area of calling. Fivefold ministry, not everyone is called to be a preacher. Not everyone is called to be a pastor. Not everyone is called to be an apostle. But we are all evangelists in our own different ways. You, are, you can evangelize with your own lifestyle. This is who we are before the eyes of men. Let the love of God reign in your heart. The love that it can be hidden. The love of Christ when it's in you, it cannot be hidden. Everyone knows, everyone sees. Let the love of God reign in your heart. Because there is no time. Use that which the Lord has given you. Use it wisely before you aspire. Before you aspire. Be an active product. Be an active product in the vineyard of God. That is why Paul was writing. There are vessels. There are different vessels. In the house, there are different vessels. Some vessels of honor. Some vessels of this, of this honor. Some are of, of gold. Some, some are made of silver, of wood, and of earth. First Timothy chapter 2. Let's go there. So what kind of vessel are you made of? Of? That's the question we are asking today. What is the topic of our discussion? Repent, repent, repent. There are, a lot of, there are so many things we need to look inward to ask ourselves. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. Thank you, Jesus. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. He said, but in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor, and some to dishonor. But these vessels are created by God. Some unto honor, some unto dishonor. So it depends on how you, you choose to live. It depends on who you yield, your, you yield yourself to. It depends on who you yield your body to. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 6, verse 16, to whom you yield your body to, that is whom you become a slave to. So when you yield your body to the, the, the God of this world, to the priest of this world, you become a vessel of this honor unto the vineyard of God Almighty. God has long given man the choice. God has long given man the choice. The choice is yours. 
2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. For in the grace that house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to dishonor, and some, and some to honor, and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. We are talking about products. We are talking about products. He said, if a man, verse 21, if a man therefore purge himself from this, what are you purging yourself from? Those things that will make you to be a vessel of dishonor. He said, but if you purge yourself from all this, you, are to, you become a vessel of honor for them fit, qualified for the master's use. It is a sanctified body that the Holy Spirit rests on, that he dwells on. If I read it again, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21, if a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and made for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work, and prepared unto every good work, and prepared unto every good work. That means vessels are prepared unto every good work. If the Lord prepares you unto every good work, then you are in the palm of Jesus. That means he recognized you. Verse 22. He said, flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace. We then are called in the Lord out of a pure heart. Out of a pure heart. Out of a pure heart. So make yourself, just like what I said, products. We are products in the market. Make yourself a vessel unto honor. Prepared and made for the master's use. That is, if any, if any man. If you purge yourself from these, what are these? That is where we begin to live. You must purge yourself. A contaminated heart, a polluted heart cannot be vessel unto honor. A filthy body cannot be a vessel unto honor. A defied body cannot be a vessel unto honor. Our body, we are told, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 says, If any defy this body, the Lord said is going to destroy. This is where the presence of the Holy Spirit resides, as well as this is where the evil spirit resides. So it not depends on who you use your body to. I was teaching the children this afternoon, and we read that part where the Lord said, when an unclean spirit leaves a man, he goes about looking for where to reside because spirit itself cannot operate on its own. He looks, he searches for vessel, he searches for product, he searches for a, a body to possess. I was teaching my children in our, our children Bible study this afternoon, telling them, to know, to be mindful of what they watch, the kind of video games they play, the kind of demonic things they now watch in internet, on the computer, whatever, whatsoever app they operate on. They should be careful on what they watch because majority of these are operated by spirit. They, it is, they are, they are, I don't know how to put it right now. When you, when you look at it with your physical eyes, you feel there's nothing that is there. You just feel, oh, this is, I don't know what, what they are talking about. But spiritually, there are things that attach underneath. They are, manipulate, they are manipulating spirits. That's why you have to be careful because spirits on, the, on their own cannot, cannot operate. They look for vessels to possess. That is why we have to be careful. Then this one that they are talking about, 
masturbation today. It is a spirit. It not, you don't just wake up and you begin to practice it. It is mostly what you feed your eyes on that the spirit enters the man, whether you believe me or not. When you begin to, when you engross yourself in pornographic pictures, what do you expect? You begin to masturbate, then the spirit begins to come into you at night to fiddle with you. Or when you begin to watch adult things, what do you expect? Our eyes, you should, should be mindful of what we see. The Lord said, when an evil spirit goes out of man, he goes about searching on where to rest. And he told us that if he cannot find any, anywhere to rest, he goes back, he says, let it go and check that vessel which he just came out from. An evil spirit does not just come, come out of a man peacefully or friendly. They are never friendly. That's why they are called evil. They carry a lot of things. They are never friendly. It is either the person is violent about it, it goes by, it goes out by force, or the person had an encounter with Christ that delivered him. Just like what we what I showed the children, the life of Jesus Christ, when the Lord was going about, he saw that man in the in the gathering where he uses stone to cut himself. Whatever the, the chains he was he was he was on. He will break the chain when the when the force came upon him. Will break the chain. Forces of demonic forces they were operating him, so he didn't know what he was doing. Violent, violent, until he came across life. The, the, he came across the owner of his soul, the one that had power over all things, the one who demons trembled at his feet. The one who Satan trembled at the mention of his name until he came across Christ. That power, those powers, those forces that were him bowed. See Jesus. They bowed. They could not stand the presence of God Almighty. That is how it is today. No force, nothing can stand the presence of God Almighty. It is not left for you to strategize yourself, to strategically you know, align yourself with Christ, to follow him, holiness and righteousness. He said, I know my sheep. And they hear my voice. Who are you in Christ Jesus? Are you a sheep or you are a good Christian? That is the question today. The young man was very fortunate to have come across the giver of life himself. The one that has the power in the entire universe. The one that has the key of hell and death in his mighty hand. So where could that force have hidden? The force could not stand his presence. See him alone. He began to shout, Jesus, that son of God, have you come to torment them? They are trying to the Lord said, shh. Power. Most of us, most of us, most people today are architects of their problems. How would you be praying to God to deliver you? You keep doing what you are doing. How can you tell God to deliver you or to give you a husband? You keep fornicating. And the Lord said, whoever that defies the body, he will destroy. How do you keep doing what you are doing and you expect the Lord to hear your prayer? First and foremost, you need to separate yourself from that which is tying, tying your destiny down. Separate yourself. The Lord said, come out from among them and do not touch the unclean thing. He said, we receive you. Do not touch the unclean thing. What are the unclean things? There are idols that you are harboring in your house that the Lord forbid you to operate on. If you are a woman, all those things that you are putting in your body, they are idols. They are idols. All those paint, all those makeup, all those false hair, all those false nails, all those false, false things that you are wearing, they are idols. Before God Almighty, take them off. When you have that, the, the powers of darkness, the, the, the powers of darkness,
They will withhold your blessings. They will block your blessings. So whoever you yield yourself, you whoever you yield yourself to, that is whom you become a slave to. The Lord Paul has explained it to us here. In a great house, there are vessels, vessels unto honor, vessels unto dishonor. And it is the same master that made, that created all these vessels. Would you say the master is wicked? No. It is the way you choose your, you choose to live. That is why the Lord, the, the Lord has not given man the choice. The time he, he was having a relationship with Adam, Adam messed up. So since then, when Adam accused Father God, it is the woman you gave me. Since then, the Lord had long given man the choice. So the decision you make is solely on your own. That is why it is not God that takes people to hell. It is the decision you make that leads you to wherever, two sides of eternity, either heaven or hell. It is how you live your, your life on earth. It is the decision that you took here that will take you to where you will end up. It is the decision, it is how you live your life on earth here that takes you to wherever you end up. So let us be wise. Paul said we should be wise master builders. We should be wise. He said, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but vessels, also vessels of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Will you say God is unfair in his judgment? No, he's not. It depends on you. The same message that you are hearing that you are not changing, the same message another person will hear and change and run his race. Paul was once an enemy of the gospel, persecuting the church ignorantly. And if he had died, his ignorance would not have saved him. He would definitely face God's judgment. When he got to know the truth, he decided to run his race personally, taking his decision, making up his mind to be a vessel unto honor this time around. And that was why 40 Jewish able men gathered, swore that they would not eat or drink until they keep her. Why? Because he professed Christ. Why? Because he professed the true living God this time. Paul was now wise up. He was not living in ignorance anymore. He knew the truth. And he was running, he was ready to run his race. He was ready to run his race because he knew the truth. And they wanted to kill him for knowing the truth. The Bible says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. What is the truth? That you must please God in all that you do. That you must live a holy life. That you must do the will of the Father. That is the truth. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. We are all vessels on this earth. We are all products in a marketplace. You go to a market, you buy something, you check the expiring date. Sometimes when you see the expiring date is very close, a week to or two days to, your faith cannot carry it. You drop the you drop the product, rather not buy than taking the risk because you you feel is a risk getting that product. That is how we are. We are a product in the marketplace. We are here, we are pilgrims on the earth here. Nobody, you cannot live forever. Turn by turn, you have attended people's funeral, perhaps last week, today. Somebody will attend your own someday. How do you live your life? What benchmark are you setting? Are you living your life to please God or are you living your life to please the world? The choice is yours. He said, choose thee this day. 
who you shall serve. The Lord himself said, he bear record. Asking not to choose ye this day who we serve. Choose blessing or cause. Choose life or death. He said, yeah, but he will make, we help us. He will give us a clue. He said, choose life that you and your seed will live. Who is this life? Christ Jesus. The Lord said, not many that profess, and told me, Lord, Lord, that we be saved on that day. So the very fact that I go to church <laughs> does not guarantee your eternity. I'm an usher in the church. That is work. That is works of the flesh. I am a singer. To God be all the glory. I am a, I am a teacher in children's department. Oh, hallelujah. I am a sanctuary keeper. To God be all the glory. Let's go to where, what Paul said. First Corinthians chapter 13. Say, what are you saying, sister? But I'm a worker in the, in the vineyard of God. You are a worker. I've just read it. Where the Lord said there are vessels in the great house. In the vineyard of God, there are vessels unto honor and there are vessels unto dishonor. So, so you being a worker does not in any way qualify you. He said, show me your faith. I will show you my works. Faith without work is dead. You are a worker, but when you live a holy life, that is what that is the key holiness. First Corinthians chapter 13. Let's go there. Though I speak with the, the tongues of men and of angels, I have no charity. I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Did you hear that? Speak all the all the tongues you know how to speak without charity without the love of god what is the love of god go and check the fruit of the spirit number one there is love fruit of the spirit without the fruit of the spirit nobody is going anywhere galatians chapter 5 verse 22 23 we tell, we tell you that without the fruit of the spirit no soul we see the face of god almighty I'm not here to do, I'm not to judge. I'm only reading the Bible for us. First, first Corinthians chapter 13, verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, I have no charity. I am nothing. Did you see that? And the Lord said it before. In Matthew 7, starting from verse 21, he said, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, in your name I prophesy. So even if you have the gift of prophecy, let me prophesy today, today, that very soon, right now, it will start raining. I'm only I'm I'm is I'm I'm only just doing utilizing my gift. That does not in any way qualify me. Let me prophesy now that it will start raining and it will begin to rain. Oh, sister Evelyn said it. Finish. I'm only using my gift. That does not in any way qualify me to enter the kingdom of God. That is what Paul is saying here. Though you have this the gift of prophecy. So for those of you that are following false prophets everywhere, they see road for you people. See us. Uh, professor of the vision. They see, see us. They see vision for you. They tell you exactly what will happen. It doesn't really matter. But of course, they are seeing for you. They are visionaries. They are seers. They are seeing. It does not in any way qualify them. That is what Paul is saying here. Be careful. Any man, any man, any woman, any pastor, any prophet that will not tell you where your soul is going, that will not warn you of your eternal, eternal life with Christ Jesus, that will not rebuke you of that sin that you are into that will not rebuke you of the sin of fornication that will not rebuke you of the sin of adultery that will not rebuke you of the sin of lying that will not rebuke you of the sin of stealing idolatry pride ego anger malice unforgiveness rebelliousness gossiping that will not rebuke you of what the Lord hates. What is the essence of going there? Are you going to that church to make numbers? 
What is the essence of going there? You are changing your clothes every Sunday. He's praising you for that sin. I know. You need that word. That you need to find your spirit man right now because we're in the, we are living the last days. You need to wake up your spirit man. You are only pleasing your flesh. Flesh cannot lead you to anywhere. Flesh was taken from the dust and it will definitely go back to the dust. Flesh was taken from the dust and it will definitely go back to the dust. Wake up. Wake up. Find your spirit man. Tell yourself you need to know Christ personally. Paul said, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. This is where we are going. I bestow my goods to feed the poor. And though I give my, <laughs> my body to be bound and have no charity, it profit them mean nothing. So for those of you, you carry camera, you go to orphanage home. Even if it's one carton of noodles, you go there, you lose camera. Then people begin to, God bless you, sir. The Lord is your strength. They, 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 they begin to comment on your own. You already have your reward. Though you give all that you have to charity, to, to the orphan, to the poor, you have no charity. The love we are talking about is not just a mere love. This love of Jesus is hard. It's hard because when you have the love, holiness is the same thing as love of Christ. This love that, the, that Paul is talking about here. The love of Christ, the love that Jesus exhibited, that even when he was on the cross, he prayed for his enemy, Lord, Father, forgive me, for they do not know what, huh? In spite of that pain, that excruciating pain, he was bleeding, his face was manned, his, his disciples could not even recognize him. Mary and the women could not even recognize him. He was totally battered, yet he still managed with all his strength to pray that prayer, Father, forgive them, forgive this my persecutors, because they don't even know what they are doing. They are acting in ignorance. Can you do that? That's the love that Paul is talking about here. Not, not loving your husband, loving your wife, or loving your friend only, loving your children. It's hard. That's why he said, though you give all that you have to the poor, you don't have love. You don't have love, love of Christ. That is what we are going to ask the Lord to help us to remove the stony heart out of this heart and put onto and put in our hearts his love his love so that we'll be able to show love to one another the body of jesus christ is so divided right now contention everywhere hurt no love anywhere because everyone wants to be superior to the other denomination my own is my my own is more superior and i and my group were the only ones that are going to heaven. Error is heaven made for only some certain people. He said, if you love me, you do my commandment, you obey, you do the will of the Father. Charity suffered long, love suffers long and is kind. Charity do not envy. Charity voted not itself. Is not puffed up. Ego, do I not behave itself? Or seemingly, there is no sentiment. Seeker not her own. Is not easily provoked. Seeker no evil. Lord have mercy. He doesn't think evil. It's not easily provoked. There's no sentiment. Then Paul is defining what love, the love he's talking about, is all about here. Let us be honest to ourselves. It's hard. Let's not pretend. I'm saying right now, it's hard. You need extra grace, this love, to begin to manifest this love of Christ. Extra great grace. Charity, do not behave itself on similarly. Second, okay. Rejoice, charity, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Bear all things, believe all things, hope all things. Enjoy the artist. Charity never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. 
When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now, we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part. But then shall I know even as also I am known. But now a better faith, hope, charity. Three, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Hallelujah. Faith, hope, love, but the greatest is love. This is what we should be praying for daily. The Lord should help us. Let God help us. We need all of us. Without this love of Christ, nobody is going anywhere. We are only pretending. We are all we are all hypocrites without this love of Christ. Without this love of Christ, it doesn't discriminate. Oh, majority of us, when we see people, when we see all these women right now with worldly adornment, the first thing that comes to our mind, mm, this one, she's not there yet. How do you know? We need this love of Christ. I pray that the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. There's what we call stony hearts. A heart that cannot, cannot, uh, cannot take, cannot, uh, how will I put it right now? A heart that easily, that throws things, that doesn't accept, that is not receptive to the word of God. That is the only heart that we must ask the Lord to remove. He said, I will take away the only heart and put in you the heart of flesh. We need the heart of flesh, the heart of love. The most, mostly, most importantly, above all, the fruit of the spirit. Number one fruit of the spirit is love. Without the spirit of this, without the fruit of the spirit, we are not there. We can't come because God is a spirit. Most of us are serving God with our flesh until we are 70 or 80 percent spirit. That's when we we'll be able to communicate and be, be able to please God in all that we do. We need the fruit of the spirit. We need to begin to pray for the fruit of the spirit. I pray that the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to bless the name of the Lord for today. I want to give him all the glory, give him all the honor for what he's doing in our lives. I want to appreciate God for as many that are here. I say, may the Lord bless every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. This altar of prayer fellowship. I'm just that evening. We are back again live on Facebook every Saturday. We have all our activities, but mostly on our Zoom, on our Zoom, on our Zoom cloud. I have put the, I pin our Zoom link. If you want to be part of us, Saturday we have children's Bible study, which I personally take children. That is 2 p.m. New York time, which will be 8 p.m. Euro. I don't know the time in Africa. I think it should still be 8 p.m. in Africa. That is what I teach children, the Bible. We must not, we must not put the children aside or separate children in this our race. Let's take them along, hold their hands along until they get to the age where they will be able to make their own decision. Even at that, we, we, we are supposed to be praying for them. That is 2 p.m. Saturday. At this time, I come live on Facebook. The same Saturday, 4 p.m. to be precise, I will be 10 in Europe and Africa. Then tomorrow we have men's Bible study, anchored by my husband. On Sunday, 3 p.m. New York time, and 6 p.m., which is 12 midnight, in the UK, Europe, and Africa, we have Sunday prayer meeting where we come. To do our prayer to usher us in to our week. I want to bless the name of the Lord for that. 
we are talking about our weekly activities. Then on Monday, we have couples Bible study, 6 p.m. New York time. That is where we discuss about marriages, issues that we are facing in our marriage, how the word of God can remedy, because that is the only solution we have, the word of God, how we can apply the word of God in our marriages. That is Monday, 6 p.m. Then we have uh, on Wednesday, 6 p.m., Bible study, where we read chapter by chapter in our Bible, our Bible, because we need to study the Word of God. If you don't study the Word of God, how do you know Christ that we are, that we are preaching? You must know Jesus Christ. You must love what he loves and hate what he hates. We are living in a wicked world wickedness so to speak never has it been like this before so on Wednesday we, we do our Bible study on Thursday we have our women's prayer meeting where we women we gather to pray for our spouses our children our homes before okay Wednesday before the Bible study 12 midday that is 6 p.m. in Europe we have our intercessory prayer meeting I am the one that is anchor, I anchor that where we gather to pray for the churches. We pray for the church. We pray for pastors. We pray for those on the mission feed on the streets, evangelists that evangelize the word of God. And we pray for souls. Intercessory prayer meeting is very important. 12 midday, one hour. Wednesday, 12 midday, New York time. You can be part of it. The Lord said, I sought for a man to stand in the gap, to pray, to intercede, that he will not destroy the world, the people, but he did not see. So make yourself available. You know, initially on this program, we talk, I talked about gifts, how we all have different gifts. Yours might be to intercede for a church or for people. So be part of it. You know, Thursday we have women's prayer meeting. On Friday, we have searching the scriptures. Where we said scriptures, come and be part of come and be part of it. Searching the scriptures is where where if you have issue, you bring if you have question, not issue. I question in the Bible. Where we look at Bible concerning our daily life. That is what we have, all our activities. Author of prayer fellowship online zoom activities we are looking forward to you being part of us and we have our daily devotional message quiet time with the holy spirit that we post every day that message has been has, has gone across over it's reaching out to people people are reading People that, that, that are willing to change, they are changing. Be part of us. I pray that the Lord will continue to use us all to reach out to people there in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are watching this program, do be, be part of it and share this message for others to also watch and allow the Holy Spirit to do the conviction and the repenting. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. Our own is to deliver the message. I pray that the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Commit every member, everyone watching this program, commit them to their hands. Commit their, their homes to the hands of God Almighty, the God of peace. Release his peace upon your home in the name of Jesus Christ. Commit, commit all the children as many that are sick. I declare healing. That he let the healing power of God begin to move over those children right now in the name of Jesus Christ. As many that experience storms in their homes, in their marriages. Oh Lord, my children must step into those homes right now and let them be calm in their marriages in the name of Jesus Christ. As many that are looking up to you for partners, either wife or husband. Father, let this year not pass them by in the name of Jesus Christ. As many, oh Lord, my children, that desire to know you more and more. You say you have not, we have not chosen, you have chosen us. Oh Lord, draw them unto you. Whatsoever they standing as a barrier between them and you, Father. In your mercy, open their eyes that they take it out. Deliver them, O Lord, mighty man, from every, all that strange, those strange gods that is tying them down in the name of Jesus Christ. 
My Father, my God, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We cover every home here. We present it with the blood of Jesus Christ. There shall be no loss. There shall be no sorrow or mourning over our lives in our children's life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Sorry, I, I forgot, but I just remember now for those of you that are willing to surrender your life to Christ Jesus, perhaps you have heard this message, you are thinking of how to go about it. You can repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Save me. Cleanse me with your blood and deliver me from any sin that have tied me Adam. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. For in Jesus' name. If you have said that, what? God bless you. But that is not the end. That is just your beginning. That is the beginning of your walk with Christ. I welcome you to the family of God. But remember 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. When you are in Christ, all things are passed away. You can't bring your old life to your new found faith. No. For the women, take off all those worldly adornments in your body. Cut that ungodly relationship where you are defiling your body. If you are still exchanging your body with that man, it's either he come and consummates that relationship by getting married to you. Stop defiling your body. You are driving the presence of the Holy Spirit for a man. Stop defiling your body. Stop smoking. Stop drinking. Let the love of God reign in your life. Excuse me. Let the love of God reign in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let the love of God reign in your life. Stop drinking. Stop smoking. Let Christ begin to lead you from now onward. Because we are living in the last days. You can't afford to play careless with your life. May the Lord help us all in the name of Jesus Christ. This is Sister Evelyn coming to you from Ottawa Prayer Fellowship. All of us here from the United States of America. See you next week, Saturday, where I shall be live again by the special grace of God. If Jesus carrying is coming, I say remain blessed and stay safe. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Shalom. <laughs>